You were looking at Washington, D.C., so obviously we are at TCT16. We know statins work partly by lowering cholesterol and partly through pleiotropic effects that we're still trying to understand. Maybe we can color in some of the empty space with the yellow 2 study. So it's intracoronary imaging, cholesterol efflux, and transcriptomes after intensive statin treatment. This was presented here at TCT and appearing online before print at Jack. And I'm going to be uh, talking with Dr. Annapurna Kinney, who is an MD and an endowed professor of cardiology at Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York City. I remember yellow trial results being presented back at ACC 2012, if I remember right. We have also had other results from yellow uh, reported. Before we turn to this new paper in Jack, tell us about the yellow trial and what you've been trying to do through the years with this great study. So essentially our goal uh, was to understand what happens to the plaque once you give statin. Because this is a question we always uh, face as uh, interventionists and cardiologists while we're treating patients. Yes, we are good in the lab, we take care of the lesions, and then the patients go home, they're on statin, few years down the road, they all come back, they have you know, further blockages. Right. So they have a question, doc, I'm doing everything right. Why am I still developing the blockage? Right. And I think for a small group of patients, we still don't have an answer. And that is why that intriguing question, uh, we started this particular um, you know, study uh, to understand what happens to the uh, inside of the plaque once you give statin and that we could only do in the lab by doing intravascular imaging. So in the yellow one, we used uh, you know, fractional flow reserve as an entry criteria. Right. And the goal there we thought that once you give statin, the morphology of the plaque will change and uh, which means that plaque will shrink by itself, so your FFR will decrease, so that patient probably will not need a stent in the future. Uh, we only showed a trend uh, because it was a small patient group and it was randomized between high dose statin and uh, reg uh, you know, standard of care. What we found there was that patients who had high dose statin and from the intravascular imaging that we did, that people who had a big lipid pool, and that's what plaque is. A uh, lot of it is uh, lipid inside there. When the uh, lipid shrinks, there is a trend that your FFR also will change. The, since it was a short duration of, of time that the patients came back within six to 10 weeks, even in a, a yellow one, with average of about eight weeks, I think it was a too short a period. You probably need a longer period for the plaque to, to shrink more and for the FFR to change. So then the next uh, question was, how does the cholesterol actually go out of the plaque? And you know how does the plaque actually shrink? So one of the theory, as you already uh, know, is what is called as uh, efflux, where we think whether it is a patient serum or right. it is just the HDL, um, where we know HDL, where we think it is like a vacuum cleaner, you know, goes, takes out the cholesterol from the plaque and right. puts it out back in the blood and gets excreted from the liver. Is that what uh, is uh, important? Is there something else that's uh, important? And uh, so to put everything together, we thought let's go and do the second part, which was yellow two, where we, from yellow one, we learned that high dose uh, statins are the best. So we just took one hour, we took a high dose, you know, statin, uh, we gave patients high dose statins. So what we did was patient who had um, stable coronary artery disease, when they came, uh, had the you know stent in one particular uh, le uh, lesion. Then we took the second lesion, we did the imaging with, with both OCT as well as uh, NIRS, and then they got a uh, rosuvastatin, 40 milligrams uh, every day for uh, eight to 12 weeks. Uh, when they came back, we re-imaged them, and then the, we did the stent. But what we did was at baseline and follow-up we collected blood for efflux, okay? And also other thing was what is called as a transcriptome, microarray, understand the pay, right. what happens to the uh, gene, genetic profiling of these patients. Is there something changes in this patient after we give a statin? Uh, and 
we compared so the patient with the lesion with imaging with the efflux of that patient and then was there any change in their uh, transcriptome and for the first time all these three were put together in this 85 patient uh, study uh, it was 85 patients so you have to take them from the baseline to follow up and all that kind of uh, intensive uh, work of both uh, having had efflux as well as uh, transcriptomes uh, and what it showed was definitely there is a correlation between patients who uh, had uh, you know change in their efflux there was correlation with the change in the fibrous cap thickness and that was independent of their lipid changes but we definitely saw that there was a change in their ldl when they came back and more important also their uh, hcrp went down trying to and with their transcriptome we found about six important transcriptome that they were important in, the, in this group of uh, right. patients so how does hdl enter into this so hdl what it actually does is as a part uh, in the efflux that it will it goes in takes out the cholesterol it works and uh, you know takes the cholesterol out of the plaque into the so when you were measuring is, efflux you were actually looking at the hdl you actually look at the patient's uh, serum you take the patient's serum and then you we put it uh, in the mouse uh, cells right. which is packed with cholesterol and then you see what happens to that particular uh, uh, oh. cell does that uh, serum which contains everything right. uh, change the uh, uh, cholesterol of that particular cell so where is this going what do you think we will learn from this that in a year or two from now will help us treat patients better so important thing from here that we found that this transcriptome that we have picked they are all part of cholesterol metabolism um, in the slide that i showed is one of them which is called uh, the sequel actually is a very important rate limiting step of the cholesterol metabolism ne next to hmg coa reductase which is a statin inhibitor so once we think the patient has received statin and we know the statin has done its job then i think the squalene level goes up or the sequel uh, uh, the transcriptome level also will be higher so trying to say this patient statin therapy has maximized if he is still developing blockages you need something else intervene on this patient means do something else in that particular patient's uh, pathway so we important is that we could develop this transcriptome as biomarkers knowing that who are responding to statin who are not responding to statin so do like a blood test in this patient by checking their blood by when they are on statin to say yes this guy will respond will not respond if he does not respond let's go to some newer drug i mean what's interesting is for some time we've known that statin the response to statin and what you get in terms of cholesterol lowering doesn't necessarily predict the outcome advantage that you're going to see there's always been a better effect than you expect from based on just the cholesterol alone that's why we talk about the pleiotropic effects yes so you're getting to the real basis of this finding that we've known about for years we just haven't understood it we never understood it the uh, interesting part of your question is pleiotropic effect is that this group of genes that we found they are interrelated it's not that one gene does one job they are working at many different levels so they are decreasing inflammation improving the uh, collagen synthesis the, the because of all this that is why i think the statin pleiotropic effect can be explained that the how these transcriptomes uh, are working together with multiple pathways you really should read the paper it is very interesting dr kitty's paper on yellow two study is online at jack it's a simultaneous publication out of tct16 for car for cardiosaurus world news and cardiosaurus world news interventions i'm executive editor rick mcguire